All information contained in this podcast is general in nature and does not consider your individual circumstances. You should consider the appropriateness of this information with regards to your individual objectives, financial situation, and needs. Welcome to Sharing More Than The Sheets, a podcast to help you and your partner make better financial and lifestyle decisions so that you can both focus on the things that you love. I'm your host, Michael Curry, financial planner, green thumb, husband, and just dad. This segment is called Michael's Magic Moment. It's my opportunity to play a little snippet from one of our previous episodes, which resonated with our listeners that I received feedback from, or I felt really had an impact on some people's lives. Hope you enjoy. We see things on social media regularly, and we see, we talk to friends and colleagues and find out what other people are doing with their money, what they're spending it on holidays, cars, Um, all these nice shiny things. And very few people these days really stop and actually think about things realistically. And when they, when they look at someone's situation and they, they just assume that they're not, that they can afford all these things. But I can tell you now that many people, even you may be listening to this episode, live beyond their means, that they spend more money than they really should be spending. Um, they wear their money. They, They essentially are always, instead of focusing on what they're saving or what they're investing or what they're going to do next with their money, they're always focusing on what they're going to spend their money on next. And there's nothing wrong with spending money. There's nothing wrong with nice, shiny things. Um, I'm not judging those that that like those things. I love nice things. I like cars. I um, I like collecting things. So it's okay to like things. Um, Some people love travel. Some people love food. It's okay to love things and it's okay to spend money on things that you love. But the point I'm just trying to make with this episode is that it's very important as well to live, to to make sure that you're not living beyond your means and that you understand your means. And and this is obviously easier said than done. You know, like the, the, there is there is so much science behind the 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 chemicals that are released in the brain, the excitement that we feel when we spend money. But there's also a lot of people would agree that when you do these things as well, that excitement, um, it's, it's short lived, you know, like it's, it's very, it's, it's, it's not permanent. It's not long term even. Like there's, you know, there are certain satisfactions we get from eating food or having something nice or going shopping, but it doesn't last long. And instead of just, you know, hanging in there for the next kick, if you could sort of step back for a second and just work out, are you living beyond your means? You know, are you, with how much you earn and with how much you're saving, are you, you know, is your spending relative to that? Um, now, most, all, everyone's going to have different versions of that, of course, as well. Like some people are comfortable having a thousand dollars in the bank. Some people would prefer to have at least a hundred thousand dollars in the bank. So it's very individual and individualistic as well. Like it's, there's not like a set rule. But what is said is the fact that we should have this in our minds. We should we should be thinking about these things. Um, and the, the most important way, to, the best way to do this is to, to have a budget, to have a discussion with a financial advisor or someone that can help you or even with your partner and to have a strategy as to how you're managing money and what you're doing with it. Um, now, in this episode that I'm about to go back to, um, it's one of my favorite ones. It's a very short episode, but... I talk about the benefits of living beyond your means, um, and you'd be very surprised. Most of these benefits are not actually materialistic benefits. They're not financial benefits. Um, and it's it's one of those things where, as well, you can't just flick a switch and reduce your spending. It's something that needs to be done over time because it is a lot. It is a psychological. Um, you know, th- there is a psychological element to, to it all. Um, it's like someone quitting smoking. Um, some people can do it cold turkey, but it's, it's not that easy. Um, and sometimes it's hard to even talk to someone about th- these issues, um, as well, just like talking to someone about smoking. Not many people that smoke are very open to the idea of talking about smoking less. So, I hope you enjoy the episode um, on this week's installment of Michael's Magic Moment, and I hope you get something out of it. The other thing as well is that you'll notice when you start doing these things, your debt will start diminishing um, because debt is the thing that normally 
be- is created when somebody seems to spend everything they earn. Um, and debt is not, you know, I mean, debt can cause issues in someone's life, you know, whether it's psycho- psychological, um, you know, if, whether it's even financial, if it stops you from being able to achieve your goals, debt can have its own issues in itself. But but on that note as well, there's there's something that we use, I mean, in many different financial worlds, but in ours, we use a, a term called net position. And essentially what it is, is your assets, which is what you're worth, minus your liabilities, which is what you own. And that gives you a net position, which is essentially someone's net worth or what, what they're actually worth. And all I can say is that from a financial point of view, and again, we're talking financial here, we're not talking emotional or anything like that, but from a financial perspective, having, if you have a million dollar house and you have a million dollars worth of debt, you technically, that net position is technically zero compared to somebody that had a half a million dollar house with $200,000 worth of debt, that net position would be $300,000. So, and again, I'm obviously there are many other variables and factors to be taken into account. I'm just giving you very basic examples here, but you could sort of get the point that I'm trying to make. The other thing as well is that you'll have more leisure time. So once you pay down debt, you won't have to work as many hours and you'll be able to relax a bit. The other thing is your retirement might be able to be achieved a lot sooner than you thought. And the other thing as well is that you might find joy in helping other people. So by reducing your own expenses and saving money, you're able to give more, you know, whether it's back to the community or to help others that are in need or whatever it may be. It will allow you to do more things. So my point is that there are many benefits to saving money and many benefits to watching what you spend and making sure you don't spend what you earn or more than what you earn. And as I said, I'd really want to stress the fact that you do need to enjoy life. And as a financial advisor, what we do with people when we look at budgeting, we we talk about all the expenses, so not just food, petrol, council rates, rent, whatever it may be. We look at what people would like to spend on their budget. So a budget isn't a historical, I guess, record of your spending. Budgeting in my aspect, when I work with clients, is looking at what goals or what would you like to spend on these particular areas. Now, it does need to be realistic. It can't be too low um, because it just most likely will mean that the budget's not going to work. And at the same time, you don't want it to be too high because you need to be able to achieve other goals as well. But the idea is to work out that budget. We talk about it and we learn to have a bit of a balance, you know, so still include time there to go out with family, still include if there's a hobby, like shopping, cars, whatever it is, put a figure in the budget but have a limit and try to work within that limit Um, instead of having no limit, no budget and literally just spending what you want. Because as I said, that's only going to normally get you one place. Now, there may be some people listening to this and I've met many of these before, which they don't budget. They just literally spend what they want to spend and they still manage to save a lot of money and they still manage to have money left over. And all I can say is in most cases, these people could potentially be saving twice as much or other way, or a lot more than what they're currently saving, if they had some sort of discipline or some sort of structure in the way they do things. You know, the only question, the, the question I would like to ask is, and the question you should ask yourself is, if you were managing your money better 10 years ago, and watching what you were spending, and you had a balance in the way that you spent your money, would you have more savings today? And if the answer to that question is yes, then the next question is, what are you going to do about it? Are you just going to ignore it? keep doing the same thing and hope that in 10 years things will be completely different or are you actually going to change something in your spending or in your habits so that you can look back in 10 years and think yes I've actually done a pretty good job yes it wasn't perfect but I'm happy with it are you going to be like Jeff and literally spend your money and use your firewood on having big nice things and not really thinking about the future or are you going to be like Jim where you're content and you're able to have that extra money or firewood to build future dreams? Or are you going to be a bit of Jeff and a bit of Jim? Now, I'm not saying what's right and what's wrong, but it's a question you need to ask yourself. You need to sort of understand which path you want to go down because going with the flow gets you nowhere and you might make it by chance, but do we want to leave it up to chance? Or do we want to speak to a financial advisor or speak to somebody or sit down with your partner and talk about your goals and look at what you're working towards? And As I said, you're guaranteed to make mistakes along the way. 
things are guaranteed to pop up. Um, when I show my clients projections, I explain to them that these projections are just projections. You know, yes, they're the best thing we have to go by because nobody has a crystal ball, but things pop up and that's fine. That's completely fine. But all you can do is make sure that you have a plan in place that you have, know what you're actually spending your money on so that you can hope and maximize the possibility of achieving the best possible financial outcome for you and your family. Now, listening to this episode, you might think, okay, Michael, what do I do now? And all I can say is, first of all, contact a financial advisor, whether it's me or someone else. And if you can't contact a financial advisor to discuss the next steps and what to do, then start with the small things. Start with just looking at what you look at your statements and work out what you're actually spending your money on and work out what the biggest things are that you're spending your money on. And then look at them and think, okay, what's the first thing we can cut back? So whether it's eating out, you might be eating out every week and spending $500 every single week on eating out. You might think, okay, let's drop that to 300 and see how things go. And once that's achievable and you're actually getting somewhere, then look at the next thing. Baby steps are going to be a lot easier to take than massive changes, especially if you are in a couple, if you are in a relationship and you're a couple, doing it small is a lot easier and then you'll have those small wins and you'll be more confident to make the bigger de- the bigger changes and the bigger decisions after that. So as I said, again, will you be like Jeff? Will you be like Jim? Make the decision, work out the next step and do what you need to do to work towards you and your family's financial future the way you want it to be. Thanks for joining us on sharing more than the sheets. Please make sure you subscribe to be updated with future episode releases and feel free to share this episode with any friends or family that you think it might benefit. Please visit us at sharingmorethanthesheets.com.au to submit questions or requests for future podcast topics. These podcasts have been brought to you by Better Financial Planning Australia. To book a 15-minute phone chat, visit betterfinancialplanning.com.au.